Scott Wolf podcast. Can you interview? Ooh, can you Welcome interview? <laughs> to the podcast where wolves actually squat, where wolves never miss a leg day, unlike us. I was supposed to introduce you, but I, I just love the squat wolf names. Like, why, 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 where in the world where wolves will get, go to squat? Yeah, in the she, gym. Yeah, but it's fine. Now it's I have a beautiful. Jungle. Now I have a. <laughs> now I have a beautiful picture of a nice wolf squatting inside my head and having really good legs. Really, really good legs. Yes. So show us your legs. I, ha- I know. I, I, have, I have chicken legs. I, 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 I don't I, think you can show us your legs because... Uh, because they're thin and I'm very ashamed of them. I need to squat more like the wolf. Oh, God. I need to bring <laughs> you to the gym. <laughs> anyway, it's lovely to have you here today. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Basim Yusuf. And what brings you here today, Basim? Uh, I'm, I'm, what, what brings me to you? Like, I'm talking to you, Sophie. Like uh, you're the first ever uh, Irish Iranian person I've ever known in my life, so I'm very interested to know. How, tell us about yourself. This is this is very interesting. I'm I, very excited to know more about you, Sophie. Do you know what? I was here to find out a little bit more about you, but uh, I, um, I, no, I think it shifted now. Uh, mm. I'm gonna reverse it back onto you because I want <laughs> the listeners to know what what sets you aside from the the young use of right now. What what's built you up to be the man who you are today? Oh. um... Well, I'm I'm 49 years old, struggling with my midlife crisis, and uh, I, I I play sports in order to feel young and not uh, uh, deal with my existential crisis of getting old. That's me in a nutshell. I love that. I want to know about the nitty gritty. I want to get back down to the roots. Like, what was the childhood? Oh, kind of picture uh, that we want to paint here. I How did that look like? I didn't know that we are in a, in a, in a shrink's office, but here's the, so my childhood. <laughs> I have a very troubled childhood. Now, I uh, I had a very regular uh, childhood as an Egyptian uh, kid uh, growing up in middle uh, in a kind of a um, um, kind of like middle class family. Um, went to medical school because I was a nerd. Uh, finished medical school as uh, as I did that, I became a, a heart surgeon. 12 years of, uh, of uh, heart surgery, and then 2011, uh, during the Arab Spring, my life uh, changed forever. I, uh, I, had, uh, I, I had this obsession of watching Jon Stewart and The Daily Show for years, and I never thought that we'll have a show like that in Egypt for obvious reasons. After the revolution, I just put like a couple of YouTube videos on the internet, kind of imitating his, uh, his style, went viral before I knew it. I am offered to have my own television show. And bear in mind, at that time, I was actually in the process of finishing my papers to go to Cleveland to become a, a heart surgeon there. Oh, wow. Uh, and I had a fellowship there. So put it, uh, put everything aside, took a chance on that uh, television, media, and comedy career, blew up, became a huge show, 40 million people each episode, biggest show in the Middle East. And I never planned for it. I never actually thought that would ever happen. I think I was extremely lucky, circumstances and um, and what have you. And then, um, you know, the, the the show had like mixed reviews. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people hated, it, depending on which side of the political spectrum you uh, you were. And uh, um, without getting into a lot of political details, <laughs> <laughs> because I know this is, we should not bring policies into this. Uh, uh, it was very difficult to continue my show. I had uh, for 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 actually at, at a, a part of my um, at that career, I I was actually I, there was a warrant for my arrest. I was interrogated for six hours for my wow. jobs, and then with the change of the regime, the uh, the the also uh, I had the show cancelled a couple of times. The, the even the satellite signal was scrambled a couple of times, and eventually the show was cancelled for uh, uh, and indefinitely. And I had to leave Egypt. Um, not, not willingly, and uh, and then I went to the United States, uh, lost everything. I was it was it kind of like overnight. I I, I, I switched from someone from the biggest uh, television character in uh, in the Middle East to an absolute nobody in the United States. Uh, had to kind of build myself from the ground up again. Did something did something totally that unthinkable, which is doing stand up comedy in English, yeah. my second language. At the beginning, it was terrible. I was I sucked, and then it became better. Now I have like a world tour doing stand-up comedy in English. I actually did my show in Dubai a couple of uh, weeks here, well, a couple of weeks ago, and now I am actually touring with two different shows: one in Arabic, one in English. 
And now my life basically is a stand-up comedian with two different languages, a bilingual stand-up comedian touring the world, and I'm enjoying this. And uh, along the way, I, when I was a doctor, I was a salsa teacher. I used to teach salsa no and Argentine tango. And uh, when and after I left Egypt, I I I, I wrote two books for children, uh, uh, and because my uh, based on my daughter's life, called the Magical Reality of Nadia, and uh, I had a vegan show, uh, and I have a, a website, a bilingual website called Plant Based Diet, uh, called Plan B, so on the, to kind of inform people of plant based diet, uh, and while doing that, I working out in the gym uh, again trying to deal with my midlife crisis and uh, not try to fade away into oblivion. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, the, the nice people from Squat Wolf are giving me now a good uh, clothes to wear because I, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm terrible at choosing uh, uh, my own clothes and uh, I have terrible taste. So they are kind of like improving my taste a little bit. Do you, do you so this is my life for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> did that answer your question? That did answer my question, but okay. I'm like, can we reverse? Can we reverse? Because I feel like you've just, summarize that so condensely right yes. but there's just so many elements to that where let's i actually want to yeah let's unpack. Let's, unpack. Let's, let's unpack let's unpack let's unpack <laughs> let's unpack let's lead the pack with unpacking oh yes pack. <laughs> oh my god look at this so Beautiful. how how do you go from like having nothing overnight right like, do you feel like you've really appreciated your journey so much more now because you've gone through that cycle of having everything and then losing everything to having everything again? Not everything again. I mean, I think what I'm grateful for, uh, if you ask me what's the most thing I'm grateful for, is that in the past 15, 20 years, I have lived six or seven different lives. And, uh, you know, we are lucky to live one life. Yeah. So what about two, three, four, five, six? And uh, I... I, maybe I'm, maybe that's the joy of life. Trying to kind of like try, uh, try to uh, live life with all of this, uh, this is different facets. Uh, uh, experimented. Right now, actually, people have noticed that I'm trying different things now for the first time in my life. I just a couple of days ago, I tried uh, wake surfing for the first time. Tore my hamstring, but that's okay. Uh, I did. I'm now doing uh, rollerblading and uh, and roller skating, and I'm kind of like I. It is so good to kind of like try different things. You know, the, the famous saying: "We don't stop playing. We do because we get old. We get old because we stop playing." So I want to keep playing. Yeah. I keep. I want to keep playing, dancing, working out, skating, surfing, kite surfing, flying. It's amazing, right? Because. It, life is very short, and I think it, we are very lucky to live this life, and I, 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 to experience it with all of its joy, with all of its pain, with all of its setbacks, that's a blessing, that's a gift, and I think we should be all grateful for this. They say when you reach 60, right, and you retire after 60, they say your life expectancy, like on average, is 12 years, that's what they say. Oh, so that so if you retire and you so do I have absolutely 20, nothing, uh, so uh, you need to be do playing. You need to be playing. Yeah, you've. Uh, I, I I have twenty three years to left. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the way. Well, you know, I I I try to not think of it this way. I have a goal. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be fifty uh, next March, twenty uh, first of March, uh, the equinox, uh, Mother Day, uh, beginning of spring. That all of that. I'm the nineteenth. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I, oh my god! I, uh, so much in common. Oh my god! Are you Pisces? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm oh a my Pisces. god! I'm a Pisces Aries. I'm with the cars. Oh my god! Let's bond. Yeah. Let's have a bond <laughs> session. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna be fifty, twenty first of March. So I I, I'm, I have a goal called the three Fs. Which is fit by fifty. Sorry, I, that's a net more. And then I and now, and now sixty. I have the three S, super sexy by sixty. And uh, so it's kind of like I have these are like my milestones. Uh, and you know, I just want to keep on living uh, until I I die, suddenly. And who knows when that's going to be? As you or said, like it's going to happen. Let's see. Boom, let's boom. see. Anyway, so to get back to getting into comedy, what drew you into comedy? start with because obviously your job was super super serious you could say yeah i hated it yeah exactly so <laughs> did, you, did you just want a bit of spice in your life you wanted no, to lighten no. up the situation I did not, is the people ask me this question it's like what well, i never planned for this i never planned for it. i really seriously when i was doing these youtube videos 
I just did it because I love John Stewart, and my in my mind, oh, I'm going to go to Cleveland, I'm going to be there for a couple of years, and maybe, maybe somebody will discover these, like, videos on YouTube. So this was in the back of your mind, though. You had an intention behind it. I, I, I wanted, actually, my biggest ambition was just to be a writer on a show like Don, John Stewart, not even a host, because you don't speak Arabic, but people who speak Arabic can hear my... I have a speech impediment. I have a lisp. Yeah? I, I, yeah, I cannot uh, roll the R's. So they, because I speak English, it, it hides. But like uh, Arabic, like Spanish, yeah. you roll the R's. Yeah. And I cannot roll it. So when you speak Arabic, it's very obvious. So I remember a friend of mine took my first video and took it to a very, very well-known producer in Egypt. And he showed it to him. I said, like, you be bringing me like someone with a lisp. He cannot be a TV host. So I was actually the first ever TV host with a, with a speech impediment. So, uh, so in my mind, I would ne I could never be a, a TV personality because of that lisp. And I and I, and I, I at that time I was also 37. I was too late for the game. So my seriously, my biggest ambition at the time is that somebody will see that video, like it, and maybe have me part of the writing team for someone else. So I didn't plan for all of it. And so even when the videos exploded on YouTube, I didn't think that like I would actually continue that in a career. So what I did was I didn't jump from being a doctor into a TV host. I took an, a leave of absence for a year. I yeah. said, I'm going to try it. And if it fails, I'm going to go back to medicine. So the story is not as fancy as it sounds. Yeah. I did not take a chance on myself and jumped like, like head first into it. That was a calculated risk. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm it's really that simple. <laughs> but then I always think like most people just see the surface level stuff. They don't see the nitty gritty inside. So it looks like it was potentially a risk or a huge transition in your career. I can imagine for lots of outsiders looking in. Yeah. Would you say you leaned into your insecurities of having a lisp, of like having a bit of a challenge to do what you do nowadays? No, I didn't even think about that. I yeah. didn't even like. I, I didn't. I didn't even know what that mm. insecurity was. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I was. I, I was. I like the thing is like when see, when people see a story at mm. the end of it, mm. they like to project so many theories on it. Yeah. But it is really not. It is. It is. It was no. No. It was just. I didn't think of it. I was just like I was going with the flow. Yeah. I had no idea if this would actually work or not. And I was just like, I was there for the fun of it. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on television now. Cool. <laughs> Seriously. I, it, it, I don't want to give myself too much credit about that. I think I was just lucky and I was in the right time in the right space. I don't think it's luck. I think it's the, having the power to let go and go with the flow. And people can't do that. Well, if you say luck the way you say it. <laughs> I don't think it's luck. I really don't, it's though. Very, no, not, I not, really no, don't. It's not too lucky. <laughs> no, but honestly, like, people are control freaks. Yeah. And that destroys their opportunities. I am a control freak. I, have, I, I, get, I, I get a lot of anxiety because I cannot. I was, it was, as much as I loved the show and being on that show, being a host on show, that was the most amazing experience ever. I did not enjoy it as I should be because I had terrible anxiety before each episode, during the writing for the next episode, the the episode like I, I I had live shows and people would like go crazy and all of the team would like you know hug each other amazing and I was like depressed the whole time because I all I could think about how can we top the next the, one. the next uh, so if like you know one of the things one of the questions being asked to me what is your regrets I think my only regret is that I didn't enjoy this time as I should if, if I would go back yeah. I wouldn't change anything other than this just to try to enjoy it more because this this is this is this is what I that is actually my biggest pitfall that I am so focused on doing things right and trying to perfect things mm. and I really need to and I'm, I'm kind of like as I'm getting older I am trying to give more space to enjoy things more other than just like focusing on perfecting it I have a question. Do you enjoy life now? I am trying to. <laughs> I am trying to. I really want to. And I just, and I think I really need to give up my, my, my control freak traits and I need to actually enjoy it as it, as it comes. I can see you're, you have a competitive streak inside you. Yeah, it's terrible. 
It's great. That's amazing. That's it, what propels you forward when I you have know, competition it inside you. you. <laughs> it, 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 it kills you from the inside. I need to relax a little bit. What would you rather do? Live a competitive life or live a average Joe So life? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can do average. I, yeah. I'll get bored. Exactly. I'm very restless. Exactly. So I think if you were to put all your problems on the table right now, in between the two of us, I'm pretty sure you'll grab your problems back. You wouldn't take mine. Yeah, I'll take my problems. Exactly. Yeah, so well, I wouldn't exchange my problems for the world. <laughs> 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 but honestly speaking, I think you had to go through all that phase in order to try to appreciate the times now. Yeah, I think it's it's. I I think that where I am right now, it's it's because of what I've been through. I'm actually appreciative to where I am right now, and even of the 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 bad parts in my life, the the reason why I am right now, and I actually learned a lot. So maybe you don't appreciate or you don't like when you have the pitfalls, the the, the setbacks, but it, it it's when you think about it, it is the reason why we are where we are right now, and I'm I'm quite happy where I am right now. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad, and I feel like you said that. Without being sarcastic as well. No, not not no, not sarcastic. No, I'm <laughs> I, I'm I'm trying to kind of like exchange uh, anger and anxiety with more gratitude, and I and I think I I want to kind of live uh, a grateful life other than a stressful life, and it is it is a journey, and you try to do it as much as you can. Do you have like a daily practice in like being grateful for certain things? No. No, I don't do this like grateful. Yeah, uh, you know, like no, 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 no. Uh, if, if there's anything daily that I do is actually uh, try to play sports every day. I try to move my body. Yeah, I, I think moving your body is the most, the best thing that you can do to yourself. It is your reserve, especially when you get older. You, it is the reserve that you live on going into your fifties and sixties. So knowing all the information that you know about, like obviously your heart health, does your external like habits does that impact your internal health yeah from I mean, what you've what you've seen like because often i see people they smoke 40 cigarettes a day right and they live a long life until they're in 90 or irish people in general right they drink seven days a week and they live a long life a long happy life so well, tell me this uh, i i i try not to do that i i try to live actually a healthy life and uh and I know it sounds uh, a little bit nerdy, but when I act, I'm, I'm vegan, as you know, I'm not a militant vegan, so I cheat every now and then, and I, and I say that openly. I don't think that you should be militant about every anything. But when then the moments of my life where I, 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 I eat well and I move well, is I'm actually happier. Yeah. So it's the inside meaning is like how I feel. I can on my phone right now. I can show you pictures of me completely ripped, extremely muscular, like all shredded. Six months later, I lose everything and I have a big belly. Yeah, and I can, I you, it, it actually, and you can see that like I'm actually in in de that picture I'm depressed. And when you're shredded? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> when I'm fat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think I think like what you do externally definitely reflects of what how you feel internally, and that is the the whole goal is to feel good about yourself. Yeah, I think that's true. But I think sometimes in this day and age, don't you not think that the aesthetics, some people put so much focus on aesthetics that they actually don't internally focus on what's going on inside themselves. And as a report of you saying you were ripped to shreds and you felt really good at that time or you look good at that time, sometimes just looking good isn't enough. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm not saying that like looking good is everything. Mm. I, I think there is like many factors that make you feel good about yourself. And that's important. Mm. But I, I think it really helps that you feel good about yourself and you look good also from the outside. Uh, I mean, you can call it vanity. You can call it, you know, you know, um, 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 a little bit egocentric. But at the end of the day, like there's nothing wrong about loving yourself and about like actually giving the best treatment for your body and 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 doing everything in order to good and, and look and feel good i think it goes hand in hand yes I'm, I'm not saying that looks are everything but i think i mean i i do it for myself yeah i do it for like for how i look for myself i, I look at the mirror and i'm happy that i'm i'm grateful that i'm in that age and i still i'm still fit and i still look okay and uh, and i think i have a better body now that i had when i was 20 21 
and I have more knowledge now how to keep it, how to maintain it, how to actually, uh, and that's good, that's important. And, and I don't think it is shallow. I don't think it is it is uh, trivial. I think it's very important because that is the vessel that we move in. That is the vessel that actually carries us in through life. And the same way you care about your car, same way that you care about the repair of your- You wanna of, see my car? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> the same way that you care about the car, if you're good to your car, <laughs> it's kind of like you, you, you need to take care of it. So I, I think there's there is nothing wrong with that, I, and, I, and I, I think it's important to feel good about yourself and look good if you can. Where does this air of confidence come from, especially when you look through your career? Right, you've been knocked down a couple of times. Where do you think this confidence comes from your DNA, or do you think it's a practice? You actually feel that I'm confident. I'm completely full of insecurities. Where do you get that from? Well, because you've walked through life and you've broken, you've been broken down so many times and you've been motivated to get yeah, back up again. But I'm not that confident. I, that, the, the, the one thing that mm. has been constant in my life is uncertainty. I see. That is the one thing that I can tell you. That if, there, if, there is a, if there is a title, if there is a, 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 like a, a heading mm. that can describe my life, is uncertainty, unpredictability. Unpredict I mean, look what happened to me in the past few years. There, not, I, 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 nothing is taken for granted. Uncertainty pushes you then? Uh, yeah, but it scares you too. How do you manage your anxiety? Alone. <laughs> 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 I, I, I don't like to kind of, I don't like the people around me to feel that. I don't like, I, I maybe I'm, like, I'm, I'm one of those like loner wolves who kind of like uh, mm. just, do I don't want to burden people around me with with that kind of anxiety with my thing. I don't want them. Where do you think that comes from? My dad. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was like a very quiet person. We never. He was like a. Uh, he was. He was a vault. He, we, we we never. He he care, he carried the the word the word over his shoulders, without uh, talking, uh, without speaking much. Do you think talking kind of halves the problem though? Maybe, but uh, yes, but some people don't. And I think I, I kind of like went after my dad and that, yeah. Do you think if you maybe did talk about this, do you think maybe you'd be, you'd be more present then and enjoy the moments? I'm not sure because like talking means that you have to interact with other people and I don't trust people. You don't trust people. <laughs> I don't trust people with my problems. Like, I mean, it's just like, I think everybody, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a combination. First of all, I, I, I don't like to burden people with my problems. I don't like to talk too much about my stuff. I'd Every, love to listen. I'd I, love to I, listen. I know, but yeah, but like people have their own stuff to deal with, and I don't want to kind of like impose on them. And I, I also maybe I this is maybe it's my DNA, the way I was brought up. Maybe I was kind of like mm. just brought up to be, take care of my myself. And I, I always like listen to other people. I always like take other people's problems, but I never really like share or ask people to 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 kind of carry the burden of my problems. I was just only briefly talking about this, and I remember. I was a trainer for seven and a half years and having a consultation, I would get people's problems all the time, right? They'd on board, on board, on board. And I was like a psychologist. Mm. And then I was wondering like, where do I put this? So I asked a psychologist, what do you do when you take people's problems? And he goes, goes to other psychologists. Yeah, and I was like, that's not, the, that's not the answer I wanted. Yeah, it is, it is interesting. Like maybe this is, a lot of people like advise me to go into therapy. And, uh, Have you I, not ever tried it? Never. And uh, I'm being from a medical field, I know it's it's a shame that I don't. But I, I for some reason, I feel more confident, uh, more more comfortable talking about my problem to someone that we share our problems together, rather than I go to a complete stranger and tell him my problem as as part of his job. I know it sounds very weird, and I don't advise anybody to do that. Go to therapy, please. We need more people to go to therapy because this is a very messed up world. But I, 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 I have haven't been to therapy because of that reason, and I, it's a block in my head, and it's wrong. I admit it's wrong. It's not the right thing. I'm just telling you what my thought process is. Yeah, I feel like it's like draining the tank when it's overflowing. You know, yeah. going to therapy is draining the tank in order to give you space to be more productive, to have space, to Absolutely. have patience. Go to therapy, guys. To speak to <laughs> other people, though. And maybe your way, do you think how comedy might allow you to have that space and to express yourself? It is a type of therapy for me. Like, I, I remember like going on stage on the last show and I tell people the fact that I go out and I share the laughter for an hour and a half with you guys is the best therapy ever. And the audience is either 
could be a source of therapy, they could be a therapist, and they could be killers if you're having a bad night. You know, if, when you're doing bad in comedy, there's a, a, the phrase that we use, like, I'm dying up there. Not, yeah. I died, I'm yeah. dying. Yeah. Present continuous tense. It is, I'm dying. It is the worst feeling ever. So every time you go on stage, you wonder, is that going to be like a night of therapy or a night of death? <laughs> it is crazy. So every time you jump on stage, what does, how do you feel? Well, you know, recently as you get better, you have better, like more good nights than bad nights. Because you never have stop having bad nights. It all it happens to the best comedians. But you, when it's a good night, oh, the world smiles to you. When it's a bad night, it is a terrible day. And how do you sleep on those bad nights? I don't. <laughs> I cry myself to sleep, not even to sleep. But like you know, you 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 you, 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 you This is like this is like all of your insecurities and your doubts and your chances come like float float up uh, like you know come back to the surface. And it, it is it is a struggle, so it is it is not really a life of glamour as you think. It has a really dark side. I always say like failure is feedback, right? But I think with comedy, some people just don't like comedians. They mightn't like the way you look. They mightn't like the way yeah. your com you, your it, it, sense of humor. Every night you go on stage, it's a roll of a dice. You don't know what will happen. Even if you, it's the same material, same same set, same room. Just I, sometimes I, I do shows back to back. So I go like, I have a seven o'clock show and a nine o'clock show in the same comedy club. And it could be completely two different shows. I'm doing the same exact set, but like the feeling is different. The reaction is different. It is crazy. It is one of the most unpredictable things ever, comedy. What's more stressful, being a doctor or being a comedian? Well, if you fail in a, as a doctor, your uh, the people like you know your failure is contained. <laughs> but if you fail in front of, here's the thing: the stakes <laughs> are much less in comedy because you're not really dealing with people's life. But the shame is bigger. Which <laughs> is <laughs> very, very, very weird. I know. Like, uh, I'm not sure whether I'd like you operating on me. <laughs> I know. I mean, thank God I'm not in. The, I'm not, I'm not in the in the in the operating theater anymore. I'm in a in a different kind of theater. <laughs> so can you elaborate a little bit on the most memorable moment of your career? Uh, there are many. Uh, I mean, it is the night that Jon Stewart came on my show in Cairo. Wow. I mean, being on his show was already something huge. Like, to, like, can you imagine like having your idol watching him on television and then being on his show? Now imagine him coming to your show. This is this, and I remember like I told myself like no, they can cancel the show now. I don't care. I mean that's that's the peak of my dream, and actually being on on uh, like uh, introducing him, giving him tribute, giving tribute to John Stewart when he received the Mark Twain Prize. I was the only non-American that invited to that. I had like I, I shared the stage with people like Dave Chappelle, Pete Davidson, Steve Carell, uh, some of the best comedians, and I was there with them. So these are like really remember like I mean when I got the Time One Hundred uh, Most Influential People Twenty Twelve. Uh, I I I am I'm very grateful for these moments. Very very grateful, and uh, I I uh, I I never expected to have a life like that. Despite all of the setbacks, despite all of the trauma, despite all of the sadness, but like looking at that, it's like I I I did I did okay. Have you outgrown your family at all in terms of the exposure that you have now? What because do you mean? Because I feel like. Um, Obviously, you've been through a crazy, turbulent nine different lives, right? And I find family don't like people to change very much. They're no. like, they want to, because they want to wrap you in cotton wool. Not really, not really. I mean, of course, my, my mom was a little bit protective. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, me, like, uh, but, it, it, you know, my dad was always very proud of me. My mom was worried, but like, it was like, it was a, it was a pr pride it wrapped into worry, a lot of worry, because that's what moms do. Uh, my mo my father, my brother was always a big support, you know. She so so the, the, my my family like actually loved like being like me being there. How many brothers or sisters do you have? This one. Just one. Yeah. Wow. And was he an older brother or younger? He's an older brother, an engineer, doctor, engineer, Middle Eastern family, of course, and uh, he was. Uh, uh, he's he's a completely different character, but like we we have the best connection ever. He's, we're, we're buddies. 
So how do you take a step away from a Middle Eastern family and just express yourself in the comedy area and try not to cross the line of pushing the boundaries too far? Well, uh, as I said, it was a very unique uh, uh, era. You know, the, the part of the revolution, what happened, there was like kind of like the, everything was fluid, everything was possible. Everything, there was, there was like uh, this kind of like feeling that we can do anything. And it was not just me, the whole country was going through this phase. So I was kind of part of a much bigger movement. And as, so I, 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 as again, I think it is just, luck is a huge part of it. Circumstance is a huge part of it. Like timing is a huge part of it. So I just, I, 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 I was part of that movement. I was part of that mindset that what happened. And that's why when, 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 when it was not available anymore, it was not possible anymore, I left. You talk about luck a lot, and I just wonder how do you think luck has been invited into your life? Because I, personally speaking, I don't think luck, luck is always by chance. I mean, I, I think, I, I don't know whether you call it luck or chance or, I don't know how you look, but like, uh, whatever happened to me, that's not normal. Mm -hmm. You cannot plan it. I mean, you can, you can't, you can't. I, I cannot really take credit of anything that happened to me. I mean, yes, maybe, op I mean, even when they say luck is when opportunity meets hard work, but uh, really, did I really put that much of a hard work to prepare me for that opportunity? No, I was a doctor. I didn't really study media. I didn't really do comedy. I just put a video, went viral, and then I was giving a chance, and I, and I just dealt with things as they come. I, I need to, like, I need to be humble enough and modest enough to understand that like I really I was very lucky and 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 I think it's it's I cannot really like take credit of all of that uh, I, I mean uh, I, I, I did not train for comedy I did not trade for media I did not train for any of that and I and it is gonna be very weird to say that like I, I worked hard I mean I worked I gotta hard. stop you here because I'm like you're a doctor you, you yeah, yeah I worked for being a doctor but like I did not work for to be that, that other, I don't know where that life, how actually, I, I, I think if I go, went back in time, I cannot recreate these mm. moments again. I can't. I feel like you're planting the seeds by studying, becoming a doctor, right? Changing people's lives. Yeah, because, you're that's, that, the because seeds. that's how life, that's because that happens to everyone, <laughs> right, right? It's right. like, come on. This and, is like very and, and then you see it pop up at the top and that was, that was your chance. That was your luck that was given. I think doctors don't get enough credit. They really don't. And don't, I think yeah. you really don't. No, like that's I, a hard I, job. I, I just, I just, took my the, that energy of being a nerd and and I kind of expressed it mm. yeah. I know but give yourself some credit and I think that's why luck has invited itself into your life because mm. not everyone can be a doctor yeah not everyone can have br uh, brains and be a nerd uh uh yeah not everyone yeah I mean, you can yeah, learn you can learn of you course can learn. you can learn at any stage you can learn I mean, again, I can I can give myself credit for the work that I put as a doctor, but I don't know if I can give myself credit for whatever career I had in media and comedy because I did not prepare for that. I just I just took my nerdy self and put it into media. So I all I did in that is just like work as hard as possible. But I I can I I I still look at the past thirteen years of my life and I wonder like how did I get there? What's your idea in delay and gratification? Delayed. Yeah, delaying it. Delaying it? Yeah. Yeah, delaying, delayed gratification? Yeah. As in like, for an example, we open up our phones, instant entertainment, instant entertainment. Yeah. Hey, do you think it's good for human beings to prolong? Yeah. No, I think, I, no, I think, I think yeah. that kind of instant gratification is not good. And I think I've met some of the influencers. And they can't concentrate. Not just that. I feel sorry for them because, um, for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, they... I think I think all they see they don't see humans in front of them, they see likes and views, and I think they the way that they carry themselves around. They I I think social media have kind of ruined mm. uh, a lot of our human connections. People are now have more connected to their phones, to the short videos. They can't enjoy anything that is deeper or longer than thirty seconds. And I and I'm I'm from a generation that I've like I've I've been through. I was there when there was nothing called internet. Mm. There was not even email. Like, mm. I mean, in the 1990s, I was in my 20s, 
and there was no email, there was no inter- there was no Google, there's no YouTube, there's nothing. Yeah. And and into my 30s, all of that. So I've seen both sides, and I I I I, I it's it, it's still very difficult for me to wrap my mind around this. It's not like we're our parents where like they have lived a very constant, stable life of the same thing, and then you know the internet happens or television, like everything that. That I have seen, I, I I was there, nothing, and then I've seen everything, and it scares me. And the, and the, and and I have to tell you, the future scares me, and the people of the future, and Gen Z scares me. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 they, I'm, they, I'm, they scare I'm, me very much. Remember when we were making fun of millennial, <gasps> Gen Z? No. I'm a millennial. Yeah, yeah. You're old. You're old now. You're old news. <laughs> <laughs> you're ancient already. You're ancient. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a caveman compared to you now. Okay, I'm going to ask you, why vegan? Oh, uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, in my, a school friend of mine, known him for a very long time. Uh, he was my age. He was in a, a water polo, uh, Egyptian team, water polo uh, national team. And... Uh, he was athletic. He was he, he we, we he was like like me like doing all kind of sports and and then at the age of thirty three he had MS multiple sclerosis and uh, I was devastated and I heard that he recovered. It's like what happened? I went to talk to him and he said he actually controlled his symptoms by following plant based uh, whole food plant based diet. Started reading about it and I and I was hooked mm. and I I felt instant improvement. Read more, n- uh, taught myself how to eat healthier. And I just feel good. I, I think it's healthier for the body. Uh, I I don't think that we should shame or make people feel bad about whatever they eat, even because I I ate meat for forty years of my life. So I have, yeah. I'm in no position to make people feel bad about their or they eat or their choices. But I do feel much better about it. I feel that I, I get sick less. I get injured a lot because I'm stupid and I don't like respect my age. But I I have uh, I have kind of like so a lot of improvement in, in the way I look, in the way I feel, in my, 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 my health. I help a lot of people with their health. So uh, that's why I, I choose plant-based diet. I, I don't even go, call it vegan because mm. the word vegan have different kind of connotation that might be too militant. But I would say a plant-based diet or a, 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 a vegetarian diet. So, yeah. Do you believe that if you were vegan your whole life, you'd be in better health than you are today? I think so. I think so. I mean, I started late, yeah. but you know, it's never too late. So maybe I, if I was, I mean, I think that your body has an amazing way to repair itself. And I think it's never too late to start. So instead of like kind of like reminiscing what like, oh, I wish I was vegan more. I was like, you know, I was I'm, I'm appreciative for all the kind of food that I tried. And now I'm happy that I'm choosing that kind of life. So have you been fit your whole life? I have I've always played sports. I when I was young, like at the age of 12 13 I I joined by the basketball team on uh, and I was playing in the Egyptian league. Uh I was not the best player but like you know I played like you know regular leagues like I did like eight seasons until I went to medicine and I couldn't do it anymore but like I, even after I finished like I did the uh, track and field I was running 400 800 meters I was uh playing uh, in school I played volleyball I played soccer I then I learned squash but not not like kind of like competitive, but like kind of like recreational uh, boxing until I got my first black eye and my mom uh, made me stop. And my uh, mom made me stop as well. When you when you yeah. do boxing, oh good. Yeah. Well, you, I started here and uh, yeah. Yeah, and, but like I actually had like a physical black eye, so it's like I went was like, and so I stopped. Uh, so I always played, and then I, I worked out in the gym. So I've always played. Uh, sports but i think now at a later stage of my life i have more knowledge about my body so i know how to kind of have like that kind of a, a look and uh, and and as you said the the, the aesthetics the look on, and how you, you 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 deal with like your body fat percentage and your muscle uh, your muscle mass so uh, I, th- I think it's kind of like the cumulative knowledge that you you yeah, you uh, you carry along the way. But yeah, I, I've always loved sports, even if I just like pick up soccer games. How's wearing squat wolf 
for you right now compared to the old days wearing squash <laughs> well, playing squash what was the what was the gym clothes like back well, then i no it's it's it, i'm telling you something. i have never cared about actually wearing good uh, uh gym clothes because mm. i'm cheap <laughs> uh, and uh, but you know uh, it's it's nice to be uh, actually to try something that looks good on you and I have to tell you it's like it's it, let alone the comfort and the stuff you look good in that and it's kind of like it's part of it like you look, it looks good it's, it's kind of like it gives you like a better look than what you actually are mm. so it's kind of like faking it yeah it's like it's like women wearing makeup or putting filters I never put filters. I never put filters. But I, I have makeup on. I don't know. I, I like you know. I just have your word for it. But like you know, so it, it, it's like when you when you actually look good in 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 in, in um, gym wear, mm. it kind of like gives you like, this is all about vanity. It's about like me and the mirror in the gym. Please don't cross my image. I'm gonna kill you. But like it's that kind of feeling. Like you 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 feel good and you also look good and it's uh, this is the whole idea about like working out right mm. you look good and you feel good so the having the the right attire the right look is good i'm actually i'm very proud of like uh and i'm not doing that as, as a plug or anything but i'm very happy that this actually like the squat wolf is actually like a local brand yeah and i love the fact that they are competing with the quality with actually mm. like known brands that have been there for years international brands so uh, that's why I've been actually supporting them because I love having like an Arab brand which is local that actually, uh, and I've actually been wearing it in the United States and people are like, Where, what, what's that brand? And I tell them, it's like, oh, interesting. What kind of wolves squat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have wolves in my head now when I'm yes. squatting next squat day. Wolves squatting all day long. <laughs> what's, what's your uh, favorite collection then? I, I, yeah, I like their vintage collection, the Golden Era. It, uh, they, it's kind of have like a... 1960s 1970s kind of look i like that it's different and it's kind of like very unique so uh so what's the future for you what does the future hold for you more uncertainty <laughs> uh well i hope that i would continue doing comedy and i am and i uh, this is one of the best gifts that you can receive and share with people and uh i hope on health wise to continue being healthy and athletic and play sports because that is another gift in mm. life. So basically if laughter is kind of like a medicine for your heart and sports is a medicine for your body. And if you have a good body and a good heart, I think like, you know, what else do you need? What's the fundamental someone should look after to have a great life in terms of health? What should they focus on the most? Uh, food. Food? Food. Seriously, like... A lot of people say, oh, what's your dress? I'm like, guys, it's 80% in your kitchen, 20% in your gym. Seriously. Yeah. Because you can work out all day and then you can eat very bad and you can just, it's always 80%. It's like 80% kitchen, 20% gym. You pulled the words right out of my mouth. I used to always say this to clients all the time. Yeah, I should take your job. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a doctor of finance now actually funny enough you're a doctor of finance, finance. how yeah, boring yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do body transformations now I'm doing financial transformations yeah, so alright that's, good. that's, that's right. like uh, amazing uh, helping people with their finances it's like you being a doctor and now being a comedian it's, it's behind me now yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you know you kind of want something a bit different yes. you know you need to pull the rug from underneath you and put the anxiety out there yes and do something completely different I totally Totally agree. Like, what's your advice to someone who wants to try everything? Where should like, try everything? That's my advice. Freaking try it. Why don't you do it? You know, uh, take a chance. Get, uh, you know, challenge yourself. Try new things. It 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 renews your heart. Renews your energy. Renews your brain. It's good. It's good to kind of like challenge yourself continuously. So, what's your future goals? Because I feel like you've only kind of vaguely told me what you want out of life. And again, you know, my future goal, the big goal is to be happy. How to do that, that's a different uh, life. But, you know, if you want to have my goals, I want to win an Oscar and Amy a Nobel Prize. But, you know, we'll never know. You have to put it out there. Yeah. But you said your future goal is happiness. Yes. Why can't you not be happy now? No, I am happy now. I okay. have, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy, but it's happiness is a process. Mm. It is not like something because this is a very dynamic thing, you mm. know. You can be happy for one day, for one moment, for one day, but you you strive for keeping that. Mm. It, it 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 is a process. It's a journey. It's a it's a journey of happiness. But despite the the setbacks, despite the disappointments, you always strive to be to be there. Mm.
Do you know my my good friend Mo always says that your default state is Mo is Muhammad because like everybody that you know is Muhammad. <laughs> I have like one Arab friend whose name is Muhammad. Yeah, yes, Mo. okay. And he may, his name is Usama, but I call him Mo. Yes, go. But he explains <laughs> like happiness being your default state be, from the day you're born because when a baby right is born right when it needs to be fed it cries. Yeah, when it's I, when it's happy and it, when it's content, when it doesn't need anything, it, it sits there and it smiles. I, I really seriously because like I mean I think humans are like cucumbers. We are like seventy percent water, and we but we just have added hormones and 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 stress on it. Basically, we we are very stressed out cucumbers. I've never googled how cucumber like. Yeah, I think we have the same water content as cucumbers, but we just have hormones and stress. So I think really we need to go back to our vegetative state as cucumbers. You normally sprinkle salt on cucumber. Could yeah, salty and, life. Or you pickle it. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the Squat Wolf podcast today. It's been a true delight having you. And I just want to ask uh, one last question. Who would you like to see on the Squat Wolf podcast next? Who I'd like to see? Yeah. Who would you like to see? Mo Salah. Oh, my God. I'm a Liverpool supporter. <laughs> I'm not, but I just I would support any team he's on. <laughs> I, I'm a Mo, I'm a Mo Salah yeah. supporter. Like I my love it. My whole family I, I, are yeah. Liverpool supporters. You yes. know when oh, three older brothers, right? We used to walk down the stairs, right? And we had this is Anfield oh, on yeah. top of the stairs, and we'd run down the stairs and, and kiss kiss our yeah. hand. Yeah. Oh and my God! It. You'll never walk alone. <laughs> so if we can get Mo Salah on this, yeah. this would be amazing. Yeah, he's my favorite uh, athlete ever. He's like his journey is just so inspirational, and I had the pleasure to meet him, and and I was hosting. Uh, man of, uh, uh, Esquire Man of the Year, and he was the Man of the Year, and I kind of joke, I kind of like <laughs> joked a lot about him and made fun of him, but he liked it. <laughs> we had a, he's a he's a lovely character. I love him. With that being said, I know I'm going to ask you another question here, and I keep throwing them out. But has there been any role models in your life, or anyone that's been a true inspiration to you? My parents. Your parents? Yeah, my parents. I think my parents. Uh, I mean, God bless their soul. I mean, they they are they're not with us anymore. But I think, uh, as people from uh, a middle uh, uh, kind of um, uh, middle class, who my my father was a judge, my mom was a university professor. They have strived all their lives to give a better life to their kids, and I think this is like they installed that into us. And they have sacrificed a lot. Mm. And uh, this is something that you appreciate uh, mm. long after they're gone. So I do appreciate them. And I do appreciate like you know, them being in my life. Do you have kids? I have two kids. And I live for them. And mm. I want to kind of give them all everything the same way my parents gave to me. I'm sure they're going to be serious high achievers. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.